Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 24 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I am just a little bit short on sand. So close. Uh, what am I working on today? Well, clearly, I'm about to make a Coke oven, because I'm making some Coke oven bricks. Uh, I promised last episode that we would get started working on a quarry, and that's exactly what I have in mind to do. However, before we get a quarry going, uh, I do have some plans to do some Railcraft fun, and in order to have some fun with Railcraft, we are absolutely going to have to have a Coke oven here. So, actually, it looks like I happen to have a spot right here that I can uh, call home for my Coke oven. That actually looks like a pretty good spot too. Let's snag this guy because the dire hammer will absolutely help get the coke oven brewing. Do I want it there in the wall? Oh that's right this is where like the... probably not gonna have it there. You know what I'll put it um, over here. Why not? As long as I don't break too far into... yeah this should be fine. Um, do I want to put it... nah you know what maybe I don't want to put it here. Because I'm gonna want it to be three deep into the wall. I want it to be flush with the wall. Uh, and I already have some good crazy stuff going on back here. My sugarcane farm, which by the way is actually doing pretty good, I think. Well, not terribly great, but not bad. It's surviving and it's making sugarcane and that's what it's meant to do. Slowly but surely. Uh, here seems like a good spot as any. We'll put it right in the corner. Cool. So we'll do um, probably right back into the wall, like I said. So that it's flush. So in order to make yourself a coke oven, it is a 3x3 three three, uh, structure that is hollow on the inside. So, like that, and boom, the multi-block forms. Nice and easy. All you gotta do, drop some coal in there. Now this is gonna produce two things for us. Uh, it's gonna take about 1800 ticks to process coal into coal, coal coke, and you're gonna get about half a bucket's worth of creosote oil per coal. Uh, you'll see you get 4500 buckets for the coal uh, blocks. That's you know, pretty straightforward what you're going to get. You can also get some, uh, a little bit of creosote oil out of wood, turning it into charcoal. That's fine, but it's really, if you're really after creosote oil and you really don't want to waste a lot of time, coal is the way to go. Besides, you can use this coal coke for burning stuff, and it's a pretty good burn time. You can see it's twice the burn time of coal. So you basically, like, double your, your coal burning time and getting this creosote oil, which we're going to be using for some good stuff here. So you can see uh, the coke oven's burning up. We're going to just kind of leave that be because we're going to need to access the uh, creosote oil we're producing in a little bit um, to, to work and help us out with the build that we want to make. Now this episode the main focus is going to be getting a quarry up and running. Uh, so I want to have like multiple parts to this build. Um, but before we even start on that let's see how are we for ender pearls? Eh, we're not bad. I managed to get about a good handful of them over the course of the past couple nights in Minecraft here, I've been going out, I've been hunting. One thing I found though, there's a lot of crazy monsters in this mod pack. Um, Ender Zoo, which uh, was like the split off from Ender IO, um, where they have like the skeletons and a bunch of other monsters, they're nasty. So uh, one thing I might want, so there's an example of one. He happens to be wearing the same armor I am. Yeah. Uh, one thing I wouldn't mind getting, speaking of arrows, is a nice bow. Uh, so I might want to work on a bow quickly before I do that. Actually, yeah. I like how that auto-sorted for me because I wasn't even thinking of putting it in the wrong chest. Ha! <laughs> so cool. Um, so I've got my coke oven downstairs cooking up some coal coke for us. I'm going to start working on, do I have the resources for an ender quarry? Let's take a look. Uh, we're going to need ender-infused obsidian. We get two of these. And we're also going to need ender cores, which we're going to need some ender-infused obsidian. So we definitely need a handful of ender pearls. And we're also going to need the ender-etched matrix, which is going to require some more ender-infused obsidian. So we definitely need three ender-infused obsidian. Uh, one set, two set, because you get four at a time, right? Um, so that's at least three sets of ender-infused obsidian. We're also going to need... Um, at least it looks like four ender pearls, so we might be cutting it just ever so close. I also wouldn't mind getting an uh, ender upgrade. Um, there's a bunch of different upgrades you can apply that all cost more power. So, for example, if you want to apply silk touch to whatever you pick up, uh, it'll cost more power. Um, and you know, it's only one and a half times, that's not too bad. If you want the fortune upgrade, you can see they're pretty expensive power wise. Uh, fortune three is 80 times the power use. Nowhere near the power production to handle that kind of thing right now, so we're not even going to consider that as a possibility. We could also do a speed multiplier if we wanted. That's not the one I want either. I wanted to do the Ender Quarry World Hole upgrade. This has a drain multiplier of 1x, meaning it's the same cost. 
I wouldn't mind just getting that in there because uh, the ender quarry will replace everything it digs up with dirt. And I would rather have it actually create the hole so I can remember where that quarry dug at. We're going to probably fly pretty far away from our main base here and let this quarry do its job. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to do is get ready and get some of the crafting underway that's going to need to happen. So obviously I'm going to need a lot of ender pearls. And I'll do a lot of this crafting off camera, but I'm going to need some uh, diamonds. I'm probably also going to need what else? Oh, that's right. I needed the magical wood. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Um, hmm. So if I want magical wood, what's a good way to go about doing that? I'm probably going to need a lot of books. Um, technically, I think I can get magical wood. Let's do this. Let's go get some of the leather that we cooked up in our farm out here. Almost forgot. Magical wood's like the tricky part of this recipe. And I'll show you guys how this works. Luckily, you can do some cool stuff, but I'll show you what I mean in a minute by cool stuff. Let's get some sugar cane. No sugar cane at the moment. Oh, no, wait, there was some. Cool. So turn this into... Wow, it's a good thing I have a sugar cane farm because I am going to be using paper pretty quickly. Uh, let's get the magical wood, as we can see here. Requires a bookshelf. So let's get books... We're going to grab a couple bookshelves. We're definitely gonna have to get more sugar cane. I'm gonna snag my nifty sigil here. That should help with that. The other thing we're gonna need is something that's enchanted. And the higher the level enchant on there, the better. And I think I can use these items here. So blast protection, aqua affinity protection one, fire protection two. We might be able to use some of these things. And oh, you know what else I need is gold. If I can't use these, I've used them in the past, and but other times I've had issues, so we're going to just try it and see what happens. Okay, so let's try this here. We're just going to put the different things around here and then some gold. Nice. So that gets us one magical wood. Not so hot. The higher the level of enchant, the, um, the more you'll get out of your crafting recipe. This will get us two, as you can see, okay? So the better the enchant, the more we're going to get. We're obviously going to need at least five more magical wood. So let me... How do I want to handle that? Let me get... Should I get a regular old vanilla enchanting table? I feel like that's not a bad idea. Let's do that. So I'm just going to need another book, a couple diamonds, and some obsidian, which we're going to need a bunch of obsidian anyway, so let's get that on hand. Now here's the trick. I actually have a couple different options here. Um, what I could do, I'm just going to snag like 10 levels worth of experience here. Uh, you can hang out here next to the anvil for the time being. What I could do is either enchant books or tools or whatever I want really and use the, um, the, the operation here. All right, guys, so here's the deal. I'm going to go ahead and get some low-level enchants, probably like, you know, cost two. The higher the enchant, like I mentioned, the better right so if you go ahead and use higher level enchants you'll get more wood at a time but i think it's probably most efficient to go with low level enchants because you'll at least get one piece uh here so that's not too bad right so i'll go ahead and continue you know one or two levels that's fine i'm gonna snag a few more and i'll be back once i've uh finished crafting everything i want to craft in preparation for the uh ender quarry all right be right back by the way, go ahead and craft a block of quartz uh, to cook it up into uh, burnt quartz. You're going to need this, I believe, just for the diamond etch computational matrix. Cool. So I've made some ender infused obsidian, diamond etch computational matrix. I'm going to definitely need two of these guys, probably more as we know. So let's get these done. Nice. Those are the expensive ones, really. Uh, we're going to need two more. I'm going to need a few buckets. All right, guys, I need a few more ender pearls, so I'm back out hunting again. All right, guys, we're back. I discovered it's really useful to check the map because you can see when there's endermen around. I think you can set it up, too, um, with a tutorial here somewhere, options config, somewhere with mini-maps so you can see them on the mini-map. I currently have mobs disabled on my mini-map, but, I mean, that's fine, right? I, 
I don't mind uh, not seeing them on a mini-map, but you can see them either on here or you can turn it on for the mini-map. Definitely makes it easier to track down Endermen near your current position because they're sneaky and they hide. Anyway, uh, spent two nights hunting Endermen and I managed to get Ender Pearls. Hooray! So what I'm looking for here to make next is, uh, you can see I needed this thing from Extra Utilities. Let's see, maybe I'll real quick, just because I can. I'll probably get rid of that in a minute, but Ender infused stuff here. No, I'm actually going to need quite a bit of this stuff. Let's get like four of them worth. I'm going to get that many for now. Three worth should be good. Now, where's my Ender infused, Ender thermic pump? Cool. So we're definitely going to want one more of these. Nice. And now I should be able to make my Ender quarry. Let's see. Do I have everything I need here? Computational matrix, diamond, endothermic pumps, um, ender cores, these guys, and a sapling. It was. Nice! Ender quarry, ready to go. Now what I need is one of these guys, Ender Flux Crystals and a QED, because we're going to need the QED to make a bunch of stuff from Extra Utilities. It's kind of the Extra Utilities crafting mechanic, if you will, but, uh, you know, it, it definitely has a few other uses as well. So let me get a few more blaze rods here. Hopefully I have enough Ender Pearls at this point, or uh, blaze powder, that is. So in order to get the QED, and I'm going to get rid of this thing, because I don't really need this one here anymore. It was just a temporary crafting help. Let's do it. So, uh, two eyes of Ender. And one of these guys, Computational Matrix. Oh, I need more quartz now. Because I didn't have enough quartz. I had just barely enough before. Let me go running into the nether real quick, and I'll meet you guys back here when I'm ready to craft this. This type of travel is the best. Oh, yeah. So cool. I really am happy that I made this thing. It makes getting around that much easier. That, plus being able to shift right click to teleport wherever you want, I mean, that's just awesome. All right, hopefully I've got enough quartz here, and we can get back to cooking. Uh, I'm just going to throw, I think I needed four in here, right? So let's go. I'll get that many just in case, but I'll only cook up four at this moment. That should be nice and quick. And let's get our QED processed, and then we can start building some good stuff. Uh, so obviously I need a crafting table here and the computational matrix. Definitely not a cheap recipe. Nice. QED, quail eating ducks, probably, or something else, perhaps. Quadratic equation device. Okay, that makes sense. Now, the QED, uh, I think as a joke, because everybody was wondering what QED stood for, he made it, like, randomly quacky ender device. Randomly uh, have a bunch of different things when you mouse over it every now and then it changes. All right, so now that we've got this guy, the end, only thing left is ender flux crystals. So how am I for these ender infused obsidians? Great, I've got one left. I'm going to go with one more of these sets and one, two, three of these might get me enough. Well, that'll get me enough for two. Yeah, I hate having three of these under-infused obsidians left, but I guess that's how it's going to go. Let's put away the rest of this junk. Um, don't need most of it at this time. And we should be ready to craft. Cool. Um, what I would like to do is make, now that I've got the ender quarry, I need to make markers. So that's going to need an ender pearl and two ender-infused obsidian each. Great. I need even more ender pearls and more ender-infused obsidians. That's not going to be a fun time. Where am I at here with this thing? I assume somewhere in here is where I've got extra utility stuff landing. There it is. So let's at least show you guys how this uh, quail eating ducks block works, and then we'll figure it out. Let's place him. It doesn't really matter where. Here sounds good. Um, now this thing is going to require ender flux, ender flux crystals nearby, and the more you have nearby, the faster the operation will run. And it's real simple, you treat it just like a crafting table, and all of a sudden you'll see some particle effects flowing from our ender flux crystal with a nifty sound effect, and you'll see the crafting process begin. Now we're going to need a total of three ender markers, so I'm going to have to hunt down a few more endermen. I suspect it's probably close to nighttime if we go check out the sun outside. So I'll hunt for some endermen more tonight, and then we'll be ready to start placing down our ender quarry and getting everything up and running, all right? See you guys in just a moment, once I have all the rest of the stuff I need crafted. You and you can go away. 
All right, guys, a little bit of hunting later, and I think I managed to actually luck out with Ender Pearls tonight. Eight of them, nice. So I'm just gonna craft up the last couple of these markers here that we're gonna need. I think I only need a set of four of these, right? So it should be like one, craft this. Then I can get two more markers, and then we'll be in good shape. One, two, and we're cooking. Nice. All right, let's go pick a spot to set up a quarry at. Oh, by the way, just because I know I'm going to need it, I'm going to snag a soul of an enderman or two. Thank you. All right, guys, so here's the plan. We're going to take a combustion generator with us, and we're going to hook this guy up, and we're going to probably want to snag a bit of liquid as well. So let's see, do I have my wrench on me? I probably don't. Let's grab... You would be good to have with me. For this moment, let's see, how are we doing? I could probably use some more stuff, but that's okay. We're about to get more stuff, and that'll make this a lot easier to make. Uh, for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and bring the tank with me, but eventually we're going to want to set it up so that we can automatically uh, transfer our liquids out there and also get the items that it's producing back to our main base. And that's, uh, spoiler, spoiler, what the creosote oil is probably for. But we'll have fun with that a little bit later. Maybe next episode we'll have to see uh, what we get to. But for now, what I want to do is, like I said, go find a spot. Now that I've got a way to generate power and a way to uh, do what I want to do, I think the only thing I'm going to need otherwise is probably some kind of chest. So let's, uh, let's grab an iron chest. You know what? Iron is what I have a ton of but I really have a ton of gold. So we'll bring a gold chest out there, at least for the time being, so we can start quarrying and you guys can see what the operation is like. And then we'll manage to work on getting our uh, items back to the main base. Is that like a plan? All right, so I am going to start making my way out to where I might wanna have some kind of quarry set up. Let's see, where might that be? It really doesn't matter too much where it is. Um, maybe I'll wanna have it up in this like swampy land up in this direction here. So we're just gonna head due south of our base. And I'll meet you guys out there. This is the best way to travel. All right guys, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm actually all the way out over here. So I'm basically due east of my base. Found kind of a nice flat terrain that I liked the looks of. And this is where I decided I wanna set it up. So we're gonna place an ender marker right here. And um, we're also going to head off. Now the trick with these is you kinda of wanna stay along the same Y level. So this is at Y level 68 and we're at X uh, 2031, is that right? Yeah. So let's stay at X 2031. And we're just going to head off in a nice, good direction and find a good spot with Y level 68 at 2031. This ought to do. I'm going to place our other ender marker here, and you'll know that things are connecting when you see these purple particle effects shooting in the direction of the original ender marker. So we're right now mapping out where we're going to have our ender quarry running and operating for us. Cool. Uh, so that's this guy. Now I believe my... Let's try and get like a decent amount. So this was 415.68, so we want to find the same coordinate over here. So we'll head off in this direction, and we'll find 415.68, kind of however far away we want to go. This looks pretty good, right? 415.68, and again, particles mean good. Cool. Now all we need to do is head on back. and get our ender quarry set up. So I think all we should need is the ender quarry here, and I'm gonna build like a little platform for this. It doesn't really matter too much what's on it. Oh wow, I'm out of cobblestone. I must have uh, really used it all. That's okay. So for now, at least, we're going to have just a basic manual process. And of course, we're going to upgrade this to be fully automated. So to get this to work, first we place down the ender quarry. Uh, no, not the ender quarry whirlpool upgrade, the ender quarry itself. And on the side of the ender quarry, one of the six sides, we're going to want that world hole upgrade. And then we want to right click the ender quarry and it's going to analyze the fence boundary. It's going to find the attached ender marker and it successfully established the boundary with which in to start digging. Now all we need is power plus storage. 
So we'll stick uh, the storage right next to it. So that's where it's going to start putting stuff. And we'll put down the power here and we'll put down the uh, nifty little reinforced tank. And we'll set the reinforced tank with a nice right click from our wrench to automatically output below it. Nice rocket fuel. Now we just need to get some water going in there, which, you know, is pretty easy to do. Looks like it's getting to be nighttime, though, so I'm going to run back to my base. Unfortunately, I have a good run to go. I'm going to get an aqueous accumulator. Might snag one from somewhere existing. Might make a quick new one. We'll see. Meet you back home in just a minute. All right, guys, so all we should need to do here is put down some water here. Put down some water here. This will start producing all the water we need. Dun, 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 dun. And then we can just tap directly into this guy with some pressurized fluid ducts. So first, before I do that, I want to set this to, you know what, let's do it active with signal. So that way a redstone signal equals turn on. And I don't know exactly how much energy this is going to draw. The ender quarry, I'm not really sure. I think it also depends on what it's mining. It drains a little bit more when it's mining more difficult ores and whatnot. So just have to kind of keep an eye on it. But for now, all we should need to do is apply a redstone signal and we will start mining. Go. When you right click on this guy, you should be able to see uh, where it's scanning at. Let's see what's going on here. Are we generating power? Generating zero RF per tick. Where would that be? You should be operating at this point. You're not getting any coolant. Why is that? Oh, you know what? It might be because of the redstone signal. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, it's running now. And you should be telling me where you're mining at. Cool. 2032.416 is where it's mining. 2042, 416, so it's probably way up in that direction. You can see we're slowly but surely getting some stuff. I'm guessing that we're not generating quite enough power for this thing to be running at full speed. Doesn't look like it. You can see its internal power source is uh, not filling up fast enough. So 160 RF per tick, not quite enough to get this ender core running at maximum speed, but that's fine. It will continue to run. The nice thing is also ender quarries will self chunk load for you. So if we take a look here, there we go. I guess we're off in this direction, 416, 2052. Oh, I know. Right? 2032, 416. Okay. So if we head off in this direction, no, 2032, 416. Are you mining right here? Oh, yeah, it is. Cool. Ha! <laughs> Nice. So you can see it cruising, right? It's not the fastest quarry in the world, but it'll be just fine because it won't be uh, draining too much power. The nice thing about this quarry is it goes in columns. So other quarries you've seen in the past, like Buildcraft, will get the top Y level and then the next one, and you have to wait until it's pretty much at its very end of operation before you hit bedrock. The nice thing about this is we're going to go in columns. So we will uh, see, we'll, we'll hit bedrock. In fact, let me just so I can demonstrate for you guys, jump into bat mode here. And you can see we've already hit bedrock on our first column and the second one's about to happen. Nice. And now that it's finished this column, it's going to proceed down the next column. That's cool. I like that a lot, actually. So that looks pretty good. Now at the moment, we're getting a lot of stuff. Now if we wanted to be a little bit more efficient about this, which might not be a bad idea, let's head back to our base and uh, get ourselves a trash can and a filter. Because this is going to let us um, not have to worry so much about certain materials that we might not want a lot of. So I'm making a trash can and I'm also getting uh, four redstone, four sticks, and some string so I can get myself an item filter. This guy is going to work. Uh, you'll notice in the recipe for the trash can it also mentions um, if you program an item filter and place it in the slot, the trash can can only accept items that match. Okay, so if we get this item filter here and say we don't want cobblestone, dirt, or gravel, for example, we simply place those into the item filter by right clicking the item filter in our hand, choosing which items go in there, uh, cobblestone, dirt, all that stuff, and then I'll meet you back out at the quarry. All right, here we go. Sweet. Now, if I place my trash can right on top here, and in fact, for the moment, I'm going to turn this guy off, never active, 
which means we're no longer running, which means we're no longer getting items. You can see we're not moving anymore. Uh, place the trash can on top and place the item filter. It's a special item, so it won't get deleted when it gets placed in the trash can slot. Now, any dirt, gravel, or cobblestone that we get from our ender quarry will automatically be destroyed. And we'll see that. Uh, I'll clear out all the dirt and uh, cobblestone that's in there currently and turn the quarry back on. Always active. Um, we should see this thing running again. And you'll notice that no more dirt, cobblestone, or gravel is going into the chest here. We did get some coal, though, and a couple other resources. So basically, what happens is the ender quarry is going to be smart enough to prioritize dumping any junk that it doesn't need into the trash can. Um, and once it's done that, it's going to go ahead and uh, put anything else besides dirt, gravel, or cobblestone into this chest for us to make back to our base. So we don't have to worry about collecting a whole bunch of excess junk like cobblestone that we're probably gonna just void anyway once we get it back to our base. That will save us a lot of effort. Now what I might wanna do is get another one of these combustion generators here and hook them up with uh, the, the ender quarry so that we can uh, generate as much power as we need to get this running at as fast a speed as we can. But for now, it's obviously running. This will mine one chunk at a time and it'll always keep that chunk loaded so we don't have to worry about chunk loaders. I think we're in pretty good shape with this whole setup here. I'll be back in a minute once we've uh, collected a few resources. All right guys, so I'm gonna let that quarry run. It should be running just fine. While that's happening, I'm gonna grind myself up a bit of Electrum Blend. And I wanna dump that into my, let's see here, Fluid Transposer. The Electrum Blend goes in there. And into my Magma Crucible, that's the wrong Fluid Transposer, that's the water one, I want this one, yeah. Here's my Magma Crucible. I'm gonna put one, two, three, four pieces of redstone in there. That's going to uh, infuse the Electrum Blend with the redstone and get me some fluxed Electrum Blend. Over the last few nights as I've been hunting Endermen like crazy, I keep running into all kinds of other nasty monsters. And all these nasty monsters have taught me one thing. I really would appreciate right now a ranged weapon. So in order to get that, I'm going to combine in my induction smelter here, which is around here somewhere. Uh, there it is, induction smelter. Uh, one pyrothium dust is really all we need here, plus the two fluxed electrum blend. That will get me um, this awesome material from the redstone arsenal mod called fluxed electrum ingots. Hooray! Um, if we check here, we should have it. Nice. The other thing I'm going to need is a bit of ground up obsidian. So let's go ahead and grind up some obsidian. And then I'm going to need a bit more blaze powder. I should be good to go. Also going to want a few string. So if we combine the following to get ourselves a fluxed electrum bow, we would need the obsidian rod, done. We need the two flux electrum ingots, and now we should have the flux infused bow. Hooray! You can see it already charging in my inventory because it is powered by RF. Nice. And hey, it just happens to be nighttime out. This is a pretty powerful bow on its own right. However, uh, if we go ahead and enchant it, it's going to be even better, which is absolutely something we're going to do. Oh man, I'm already one-shotting a few things here. There's a lot of monsters outside, as you can see. But even without having this thing um, enchanted yet, I'm one-shotting quite a few monsters, even some of them having um, armor on, which is nice. Fortunately, I can't kill Endermen with it, but that's okay. I'll be able to kill all the other monsters nearby. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, you'll notice that it does mention here, um, press V to quell. So you can charge this thing up. V is the default key uh, binding that will kind of charge this thing up and make it be more effective, a.k.a. do more damage. You can see it's doing, ah, there's the witches. Ah, the wither cats. Dude, whatever this monster is that Crazy Pants added, he is a lunatic. These witches, like, power up their cats into wither cats, and they're ridiculously painful. Like, kill you in two shots even though you have armor on painful. Looks like they kind of disappeared. I don't know what happens to them. They disappear after a while sometimes, but let me go hide in my base again. That's fine. I'll do that. And the magnet. Cool. One, four... Two torches and cobble. That's good enough for now. 
So charging it up, obviously, more damage, right? You can see I'm one-shotting stuff once it's charged. Not so much one-shotting things when it's not charged. But believe me, I'm going to enchant this bow, and it's going to be even more powerful. Nice. Of course, while charged, it uses more power, but that's not a problem for me, because I've got wireless recharges going on. Nice. All right, so this will definitely help me in my hunt for more ender pearls at night. It means I can kill stuff from a distance, because there is quite a few nasty things laying around. See? There he is. I knew he was hiding somewhere. Good thing I got his ender cat when he wasn't looking. <laughs> Alright guys, I think that's a good wrapping up point for the episode. So what I'm going to do between this episode and next um, is work on ah, probably getting a few more ender pearls because I'm going to need to next manage to get items from point A to point B, aka my ender quarry needs to transfer items to my base. And I wouldn't mind being able to get some rocket fuel out there as well because we're going to want to keep that thing powered and those tanks that are currently out there are just not going to do the trick. Man, I love bows. So much fun killing stuff from a distance. Haha. -ha. Especially when you one-shot. Like, bows are kind of boring unless you can one-shot everything. I feel like a sniper. Alright guys, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, next episode, probably, like I said, going to do something related to Railcraft to get my um, quarry functionality going. But uh, it's really kind of a long distance. I don't feel like running any carts and rail tracks and all that stuff all the way in such a far distance. Don't worry, I've got plans. All right, guys, for now, take it easy.